What's up guys, Grim here. Today we're going to talk about the new expansion for Rift, Starfall Prophecy, and some of the details that have been released up until this point. Now mind you, a lot of the things that have been released are on the live stream as well as StarfallProphecy.com, so I'm not going to be able to go over every little thing on this video, but we'll try to clue you guys in on what's released so far and the major details at that. Some of the information that I'm going to talk about is speculation and some of it could even be slightly wrong because things can change by the time the expansion is released. Also during the live streams it seems like the developers are kind of stumbling over themselves and sometimes saying the wrong information. So just take it for what it is and hopefully you guys will enjoy this video. To start off with, Starfall Prophecy is going to take place on the Comet of Enket. And this is kind of the meat and potatoes of what you guys seen at the end of Nightmare Tide whenever you got to actually visit the Comet as a prelude to this. But this is going to be the major expansion with five new zones and lots of stuff to come. Now apparently this comet has been traveling through the planes and the two main planes that it took elements from are the Plane of Fire and the Plane of Life. This expansion is going to have five brand new zones. Two of them are going to have elements from the Plane of Life, and two of them are going to have elements from the Plane of Fire. The fifth zone, we're not really too sure exactly what's going to be in it, but it's not going to be released at the time of the official expansion release. So obviously it's still being worked on and we're going to find out about it later. Now that you know the main elements of the expansion, let's get into the details of it and show you guys exactly what all's coming. Starfall Prophecy is going to be a buy to play expansion. Now in the past they've tried to do free to play expansions to where you actually got to play everything for free and then there would be microtransactions. But there was always like something to try to draw you into spending money. Like recently it was the earring slots that once they said that you had to spend real life money in order to get these slots on your character to equip earrings, everybody cried foul and everybody was upset. Tons of people left the game. All kinds of bad stuff happened well now they're saying okay we're not going to play that game we're not really going to go back and forth with you guys and be labeled the the bad guys every time we try to make a little bit of money on this game so we're going to go with the format that other games are doing and not getting ridiculed over which is outright sell the expansions and make you guys pay for it anyway but without the backlash for those that don't want to spend money on the game though, there are ways to get this expansion. They have said that people can gift it to you. So if you want to make a trade in game with somebody else such as giving them plaid or items or whatever, they can actually gift the expansion to you so that you will have access to everything to come. One of the first things that we have to talk about with this expansion is the level cap increase which is going to be from level 65 up to level 70 now. That means that each of the lands is probably progressively going to get harder and it'll start out at level 65 content and then eventually get to level 70 content. Another major selling point with this expansion is the legendary abilities and this is apparently a way to upgrade your current abilities to make them more powerful. They have said that you'll get one upgrade every single level that you get so if you hit level 66 you're actually going to get one ability that you can upgrade and then another one at level 67 all the way up to level 70. They have said during the live stream that there would be five to seven abilities per soul that you can upgrade. So whenever you're choosing which one you want, you only have five to seven abilities that you can upgrade in the soul of your choice. Now you can put a legendary abilities into other souls like one point here and then two points in another soul. And sometimes that's going to have a benefit both ways, such as if you use an ability from champion, that is a legendary ability, it may buff up everything that is not a champion ability to where it's going to benefit your other souls. If you want to put all of your legendary abilities in one soul, you will be able to put up to three points in a particular soul. So you have to spread them out because you're going to have two points left over by the time you hit level 70 if you're only focusing on one soul. And apparently the amount of abilities that you can actually buff up to legendary is going to be limited to how many points you have put into that soul altogether. So if you put in 61 points into a particular soul, you're going to be able to put your full three points into legendary abilities there. But if you have no points into that soul, you might be able to put one in there, but no more after that. 
I did specifically ask the developers during the live stream if these legendary abilities are going to work in PvP and they said yes they will work in PvP and actually some of them may even have PvP specific abilities to them so otherwise the effect will only go off if you're fighting in a PvP warfront or conquest. One of the legendary abilities that they kind of made an example of but they kind of acted like it may not be exactly how it works. They kind of said that Bull Rush from the Champion Soul could actually knock back the opponent and then charge into them afterwards. So I'm not too sure what the benefit of that would be but it's kind of curious what all they're going to come up with. They have said that once the expansion releases there will be new dungeons and one new raid that will be a 10 man raid that everybody can take part in. They said that the focus in the future is going to be on 10 man raids, they're going to steer away from 20 man raids because they're not as popular, so the focus is going to be on 10 mans from now on out. This will also be the first time that Rift has ever dabbled into the looking for raid format. In many other MMOs there is a button that you can select that will list all the raids available and then you can select them and queue up for them and it will automatically put you into a raid. This makes it easier for players to take part in the new content but it also makes it to where the content is usually a little bit easier than it would be if you organized a raid on your own. So with the looking for raid system it's pretty much guaranteed that the rewards will be less than if you actually organize a raid but it will give you the chance to take part in a rating system that is going to be fun for everybody most likely. There will be a new event system called the Fortress Sieges, which how this exactly works is kind of confusing at this point. Hopefully they'll release future details that will clear it up. But they have said that it will start out as a solo thing, so you can go around and fight whatever you need to in the open land, I believe. And then it will turn into a group format, and then eventually into a raid format. I don't really want to get too much into Fortress Sieges because this is something that whenever they talked about it during the live stream they were actually making mistakes on what they were saying and people were coming in correcting them so I would hate to give you guys too much bad information and end up getting you guys excited for something that actually is not going to be that way. Between the raiding system, the dungeons, the fortress sieges and the such, apparently there are going to be old heroes from the old school Talara that are going to be making a comeback in this new expansion. So if there was an old hero that you really liked back whenever you first started playing Rift or something, hopefully that character will be making its return in Starfall Prophecy. On the PvP side of things, they haven't really released too much information. They have said that there would not be a new Warfront, so we don't really know what all's coming up for us. But they have said that Warfronts will actually be like a 65 to 70 type of format. The way they said it makes it a little bit confusing because I'm not really sure if it's going to bolster everybody down to 65 or is it going to bolster everybody up to 70 or is it actually going to keep you at your level and you just be less powerful at 65 than all the level 70s that's going to be in the warfront with you. I'm not really sure so I don't want to speculate on it too much but I will say that you need this expansion as a PvPer because of the legendary abilities anyway. Apparently there's going to be a new way of upgrading your gear now which is going to be based on achievements rather than currencies. So now instead of getting so many marks of whatever along with some kind of a mender to upgrade your gear now it's going to be where in order to get the first upgrade you might have to go complete this type of dungeon or if you want to get the best upgrade you got to beat the last boss of a specific raid or something like that and there will actually be PvP achievements as well they kind of threw that out there I mean they wasn't really making everything specific and definitive but they were kind of throwing it out there so it sounds like you'll be able to have PvP achievements as well. The first question in my mind whenever I heard that is is this going to be the return of PvP specific gear? We can always hope. In the new lands there will not be a new city hub so otherwise Tempest Bay will still be the main place in order to get your quest to do your auctioning and all that kind of stuff. Margo Palace has not really been an option for a long time because of the lag issues. So they've kind of focused everything on Tempest Bay and that's going to continue to be the place to go even when the new expansion comes out. There will now be a new item rarity which is going to be called Eternal. Apparently this Eternal gear is going to have abilities with it whenever you get that kind of rarity. So look forward to lots of cool stuff coming with this legendary equipment. Something that's going to please almost every player in the game is Planar Fragments and this is going to be a way to actually customize your gear to have the stats that you're looking for specifically. 
So if you're wanting to play your warrior as a warlord and focus on attack power for all the benefits, you can actually customize your gear with the planar fragments to have all attack power. But if you get an attack power item and you actually are wanting to play the paragon role, you can actually switch the gear over to crit power or however you would like to customize it. So obviously these planar fragments are going to be a hot commodity that everybody's going to want in order to customize their gear. Speaking of gear, people asked in the live stream if there was going to be requirements to gear such as the planeswalker water requirement on some of the nightmare tide items. The answer was that they did not plan on doing that anymore and they were actually going to make a requirement that would be more like level 70 or something. So otherwise if you get a level 70 piece of gear, you have to be level 70 in order to equip it. And that was going to be pretty much the main requirement for stuff like that. It was also said that there would be a new Sparkle Quest for level 70, but it probably wouldn't be included in the actual launch of Starfall Prophecy. When asked about affinity items, they said that there wasn't anything specific that they were releasing with the expansion, but new affinity items would be coming all the time, so look forward to them. The last thing we're going to mention is probably one of the biggest things that's going to be included and some of this is going to be coming out before the expansion apparently and that is the 64-bit technology coming to Rift. Performance issues have always plagued Rift and they've already come out with the multi-core technology and now we're going to have the 64-bit technology to go with it and help improve the performance of the game overall. That's most of the information that we have on this expansion up until this date. Now if you want specifics be sure to go ahead and tune into the Rift livestream that happens every Friday because the developers talk about lots of things you'll actually get to see the actual gameplay of the new expansion and stuff like that so don't miss it and also go to starfallprophecy.com because lots of details will probably be released there. I hope you guys enjoyed this video and I will be releasing more in the future as information comes out about the expansion. If you like the video smash that like button. As usual my name is Grim and I'll see you next time.